Have you ever lost, say, $10 billion in one day? Well, this guy did. Now I know what you're thinking. How on earth could anyone lose that much money in a single day without being a government official? Well, in order to answer why, Sam Bankman-Fried fell off the Bloomberg Billionaires Index in less than 24 hours, we have to figure out how he managed to get $10 billion in the first place. In May 2019, Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, founded FTX. Just two years later, that company had grown to be one of the largest crypto exchanges in the entire world. Considering how small FTX was compared to other crypto exchanges, the rapid growth of the company combined with SBF's own ability to sell himself to the general public led to a wave of investors piling on to buy into one of the fastest growing companies in history. By January 2022, FTX was valued at a staggering $32 billion, and the wealth of FTX met a staggering amount of wealth for SBF. Now, loaded with cash and having a growth story that he could easily sell to even more investors, SBF was able to use his swift rise to stardom to buy a series of high-profile endorsements from celebrities and investors like Tom Brady, Shaquille O'Neal, and even Kevin O'Leary. They even bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat's basketball arena, renaming it FTX Arena. But sports arenas and endorsements weren't the only things SBF was buying. He was also buying the loyalty of members of Congress. During the 2022 election cycle, SBF became one of the largest political donors to congressional candidates to the tune of nearly 40 million, making him the second largest donor to the Democratic Party. And it was around this time that he began suggesting that federal agencies like the CFTC should take a larger role in regulating the industry. SBF also began lobbying Congress to pass very specific laws that would have left all of their opponents staring into oblivion. SBF was at the top of the world. He had all the money, endorsements, and political favors he could possibly ask for. And FTX was on the verge of gaining regulatory capture within the federal government. And then it all fell apart. On November 2nd, 2022, Coindesk published an article outlining how the crypto trading firm Alameda Research held billions of dollars worth of FTX's own unique cryptocurrency, the FTX token. You see, Alameda had been using those tokens as collateral in order to take out loans. And since the FTX token was simply being printed out of thin air by FTX, it meant that the collateral Alameda was using was actually worthless. Four days later, the CEO of Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange and former investor in FTX, announced his firm would be liquidating all of its holdings of the FTX token. Almost immediately, a crypto equivalent of a bank run swamped FTX as investors lost confidence in its token, with its value falling over 80% in less than a single day. Less than a week later, FTX filed for bankruptcy, but here's the confusing part. Why was he the one calling for more government oversight and regulation? Well, that's what regulatory capture is. It's when a bad actor within an industry cozies up to the government in order to get protection for themselves while everybody else goes down as a result. 